Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 2 in the Jan 2010 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up here and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. All right, so they tell us that the following is a list of transactions for Clouden, a sole trader. Okay, so long story short, what they want us to do is to draw up a cash book. All right, so we have a list of transactions here, this long list, and we're going to go through them one by one. Okay, so on May 1st, we have balances brought forward. Cash, 2,530, and bank, 15,600. Now, cash and bank are both assets, and assets have debit balances. So you're going to see both of those items across here on the debit side of the cash book. The next item says that we paid wages by check, 6,300. Now, a payment is will, of course, require money to come out of our, in this case, bank account, because we are paying with a check. When money comes out of our account, it means the bank account is going down. Because bank is an asset and we have to record a decrease in an asset, it will go on the credit side of the bank account like this. So you're seeing on the credit side of the cash book under the bank column, 6300, that's a credit to bank in this case, or credit to the cash book under the bank column. It is not a credit to wages. Yes, wages is written on the credit side of the cash book, but this is not the credit to the wages account. This is the credit to the cash book. Okay, now let's take a look at the next transaction. We have received a loan of $10,000 by check from the big development bank. So if we are receiving money by check, it means our bank account is increasing. To record an increase in bank, which is an asset, you have to debit the asset account. So you're going to see the debit on this side, which is the debit side, under the bank column, loan, big development bank on the 5th of May. Again, this is not a debit to loan. This is a debit to the cash book where loan big development bank is under the particulars column. That tells you the other account affected by the transaction. Okay, moving on from there, we now have cash sales to T. Richards amounted to $465. Now, if you make cash sales, that means that you are earning money. And if it's cash sales money, you're actually collecting cash, which means your cash is going up. Since cash is an asset and we have to record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. So you're going to see on the debit side of the cash book under the cash column 465 and it's coming from t richard right so just think of it this way the particulars column on the debit side of the cash book this tells us where the money is coming from right on the credit side that tells us where the money is going okay okay let's move on from there next we have on the 10th okay paid m duff account in full by check the amount, the outstanding amount, sorry, was $5,000 before taking 5% cash discount. Okay, so we have to pay by check, which means its bank is being affected. And since it's a payment, bank is going down. And to record a decrease in an asset, you have to record it on the credit side of the asset account. Now, the outstanding amount is 5000 And we have to take a cash discount of 5%. So we're going to find 5% of 5000 which is $250. And we're going to subtract it from that. Okay, that's going to give us 4750 So let's put that in on the credit side here. So you're seeing on the bank, 4750 the actual amount collected. And under the discount received side, you're seeing 250 which is the discounted amount. And of course, the dates and, and, and to whom the money was paid. Okay, next. On the 13th, we have paid electricity by cash, $765. Okay, so again, if it's a payment, that means our money is going down. We pay by cash, so cash is decreasing. And to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. So you're going to see on the credit side of the cash book, under the cash column, you're seeing 765, and we're paying electricity on the 13th of May. All right? Sometimes, actually, I feel it's, it's easier to read these things going right to left as opposed to left to right. It makes more sense, at least the way I like to read them. Okay, next, we are looking at May 17th. The following paid their accounts. L. Joseph, 4,500. V. Tola or Thola, 2,560. And they're telling us that each deducted 5% cash discount and paid the difference. So we have some discounts allowed here. So we have to find 5% of 4,500, which I think is 225. Subtracted from that, which will give us 4,275. Let's see if my arithmetic, my mental arithmetic is still good. So, right. So on the 17th, right, from L. Joseph, we received... 4275 and the discount the discount amount that was allowed was 225 and of course if you add back 225 and 4275 you're going to get the full 4500 that was the amount owed in the first place 
Now, V Tola was 2560, so 1 20th of that is 1 2, 128. 128 from 256 is 2432. Let's see, let's see, let's see. And that's going to also go on the debit side. Yeah, 2432, right. So again, on the 17th, I didn't repeat the 17th, but you can if you want to, right? So it's coming in, right? Money is coming in, right? And they said it was paid by check, right? So that's why it's under the bank column here. We actually received 2432 after having allowed discount of 128. And if you add back these two figures, you get back 2560. And of course, the money came from VTOLA. Okay, next, we have on the 22nd transferred $500 from cash to bank. So this is a contra entry. Money is moving between cash and bank. Okay, now it's go if it's going from cash to bank, it means bank is increasing. We're putting money in the bank. Bank is an asset, and, be and because it's increasing to record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. So on the debit side of the cash book, under the bank column, you're going to see that $500 figure. The folio will have a C. C meaning contra entry. Money, money was exchanged between cash and bank. And of course, it came from cash. Now, on the credit side, you have to also show that same 500 coming out of cash. right? Now, it's on the credit side because money is coming out, which means the asset is decreasing. And to record a decrease in an asset, you have to credit the asset account. And we are seeing a C under the folio column because it's a contra entry, money moving between cash and bank. And of course, the money went from cash to bank. So that's why it's there. Okay, now let's take a look at the item on the 26th. So it says, paid Quashi 29.40 by check, having deducted 2% cash discount. Oh, so this is a reverse calculation for the discount. So 29.40 is after having deducted 2% cash discount. So that means that this amount here is after the discount has been deducted. So you're not, you're not, you are not going to find 2% of 2940 and subtract it from 2940. No, the 2940 was after the 2% of the bigger amount was subtracted from the bigger amount. Now, hear me out on this, right? If you take 2% away from a whole, one whole is 100%. 100% minus 2% is 98%. And that was the amount that was remitted. The 2940 is equivalent to 98%. So if 98% of the full amount is 2940, you can find the full amount by taking 2940 and dividing by 98%. And that amount is 3000. So two, check it out. 2% 2 of 3000 is 60. 3000 minus 60 is 2940. So that's how we're going to find out. Of course, there are different ways because it's maths. And the beauty of maths is that there are many different ways to find the same answer. But we're paying Quashi. So it's going to go on the credit side of the cash book under the bank column because we paid with a check. So we're going to have to put it under the bank column. And of course, $60 is the discount received. That goes under that column. And we are paying Quashi. All right. Now, the next transaction says Mr. Clowden bought a car for his personal use at a cost of $25,000 paying by check. So the question here but that most students ask is, does that mean that this transaction was outside of the business and they put this entry here to confuse us? And I would like to say yes, but based on my experience with these questions and of course having consulted with other teachers, this here was joint. Mr. Cloud and used the business's money to pay for the car. So you're going to see on the credit side, under the bank column, 25,000. And because it's an amount of money as a resource, the owner is withdrawing for his personal use. It's drawings. That's why drawings is in the details or particulars column. All right. And finally, on May the 30th, we have received cash settlement of $200 from Magna Insurance Company. So if we receive that cash settlement, money is coming into us. So our cash account is increasing. Cash is an asset. To record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. So on the debit side of the cash book, under the cash column, you're going to see $200 there. And of course, it came from Magna Insurance Company. Now, those are all the transactions. So we now have to balance off the cash book. Now, the discounted um, columns are not balanced off against each other. They are simply totaled and their totals are transferred to their respective accounts in the general ledger. The cash columns are balanced off against each other. So on the debit side, that's money coming in. On the credit side, it's money going out. Your balance is how much money you have left. So if you add up these items here, you're going to get 3,195. If you add up these items here, you're going to get um, 1,265. So when you subtract now, you're going to find the difference. And that's going to be put on the side of the lower amount, right? That's going to be 1,930, right? So now if you add up everything here, you're going to get the same 3,195 you have on this side here. Now with the bank, 
right? The debits, again, are money coming in. So you have 15, 6, 10, 42, 75, 24, 30. You have money coming in. Great. That's so length 32, 8 or 7. Now, when we add up everything on this side, this side is money going out. That's 38, 990. So more money went out than came in. So what's going to happen is the balance is going to be carried down from this side here. That means it's an overdraft. Okay. So we're going to put that there as well. Now we're going to, now we're going to total up everything and we're going to see the balance. Yeah, sorry. The balance carried down from here is of course brought down on the credit side across here and the balance carried down from here is of course brought down, right? So it was carried down from the credit side and brought down on the debit side and you're going to see that right there. Okay. So that's the cash book. Right. So, of course, if you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Right. Now, there was a part two to this question that asked, what's the significance of the closing bank account balance? Right. That's an overdraft. That's all it means. Right. It's a bank overdraft, which means you spent more money than we had in the bank. Long story short. OK, let's take a look at part B to this question. OK, so part B starts off by telling us in June 2009, Mr. Cloud made the following credit purchases from three suppliers who each offered a 10% trade discount and a 3% cash discount if the account is paid within one month. Now, this is an important distinction here. Trade discount and cash discount are not the same items. Trade discount, as I say here, right, that is a discount given at the point in time of purchase. It's like a, a reward for purchasing many items. Some people say for buying in bulk. And cash discount is a reward or a discount given rather to encourage early repayment, right? So another big difference is that trade discount is not recorded in the books. It's deducted on the invoice and the net amount on the invoice is used for double entry. Cash discount, of course, has to be recorded. And you, you saw that in part A with discount, receiving the discount allowed. Now let's take a look at these items here. So we have Harris and Sons Limited, right? We bought six bags of rice at 430 each, four cases of milk, 265 each, six bottles of oil, $15 each. Now, in order to find out the dollar amount that would be used to record the value of the purchases, we have to do a bit of arithmetic. Okay, so let's list these things out. So we have six bags at 430 per bag, 2580, four cases of milk, 265 each, 1060, six bottles of oil, $90 each, sorry, $15 each, that's 90 in total. And our total, the gross amount is 3730 Now, the question did say that we get a 10% trade discount. So we're going to find 10% of 3730 which is 373 and subtract it from the 3730 which will give us 3357 Now, what we're going to do is we're going to calculate for LJ Enterprises, right? So LJ, from LJ we bought on June 11th, two bags of salt at $60 each, three bags of onions at $120 each. So we're going to see that calculation. And two bags at 60 is 120 Three bags of 120 is 360, total in 480, 10% of which is 48, subtracted from 480 because it's 432. Lovely. And the third set of purchases was from A. Harden. On the June 26th, five cases of soda, 42, three cases orange juice, 75, three cases ketchup, 135. Okay, let's start doing the calculation. Five by 42 is 210, three by 75 is 225, three by 135 is 405, totaling 840. 10% of which is $84, and that's going to give us $756. Now, we're going to put each of these figures in the purchases journal, yeah, because that is the journal that shows credit purchases. Okay, let's take a look there. Okay, so you're seeing our purchases journal, date, particulars, folio, invoice number, amount, 2009. So, on the 5th of June, from Harris and Sons, that was the first one, that's 3357 sorry. Then we had from LJ Enterprises 432, and then we had from A Harden $756, totaling $4,545. And it should say total credit purchases trans for the month transferred to the purchases account in the general ledger. I just didn't have enough room to put all of that. Okay. All right, there's one more part of this question. Let's check it out very quickly. Okay, so the final part of the question asks if Mr. Clouden pays LJ Enterprises within the month, what would be the amount of this cash discount? Okay, so the question did tell us up here that they will get a 3% cash discount if the account is paid within a month. Okay, so the transaction is relatively simple. You're going to start off with the amount due, which is the $432. 
Then you're going to subtract the cash discount, 3%. Now, you could use dollars and cents, or you could simply round it off to $13. I think that, that would be fine, to be honest. I'm just showing you 3% because I know some of you all are very particular and exact, and nothing is wrong with that. I'm not criticizing that in any way. I like to be that way as well. All right. And of course, when you subtract that, now you're going to get $419.04. And that's the net amount to be paid after taking into consideration the cash discount. And that's about it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question two from the Jan 2010 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyhow, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.